Hi, my name is Pablo Fernandez. I am co-founder and CEO at Clickers, the leading online counseling company in Spain. We have 400 million in revenues. We are almost 700 people. And what we do is we buy cars from consumers and corporates, and then we sell it to, to consumers 100% online. The company was founded in 2016. And uh, last year we IPO'd at uh, Euronext uh, in France and it's uh, the, the high growing company growing at uh, more than 100% for the last five years. So in 2017, we sold a majority stake of our company to a strategic investor. And then we signed up an earnout extractor for the next year. When we were approaching 2020, we were a hit on the public markets with a lot of companies uh, IPOing. So uh, we discussed with our strategic investors the opportunity to IPO the company and change the earnout structure for uh, going public. So after uh, many conversations, uh, we took the company public in June uh, 2021, when it was a transformational journey uh, for a new phase for the company. So something that I learned in the process of taking the company public is that you can always realign the interests of all your stakeholders, the board, your investors, your employees, towards a new common strategy. So you always have these legacy contracts, shareholders agreement, uh, redefined strategies, but you are the founder of the company, you are the leader of the company, and it's your role to rethink constantly what's best for the company and convince in a rational way all your stakeholders to move the company towards a new world. In our case, it was an IPO, but it could be an acquisition, it could be a merger, any corporate decision, just make sure that you can always have an impact and change the course of the company. So one of the things that I learned in this uh, process of taking the company public is that the moment you announce to your investors and the key team members that you are in this process, you have this alignment uh, within the organization. You have a lot of pressure for your investors to, to, to get an exit. And what really worked for me was to create a personal board of directors of other Endeavor entrepreneurs that have taken their company public previously and they were able to give me an unbiased, direct, honest and uh, well-intended feedback that really helped me to manage all the stakeholders and the personal pressure that I, uh, I was under. And I think this is one of the great things of organizations like Endeavor. You always have people that have gone through this process before. Uh, they are not going to make, they are not investors, they are not going to make more uh, money uh, on this. They just want to share their experience and uh, for you, you create this uh, a space where you can get out from your daily pressure from stakeholders uh, and actually learn from, from their experiences. So IPO in your company is a very exciting event, but it's not the finish line. It's just the beginning of a new phase of the company. And when you are uh, ringing the, the belt and it's the culmination of a very uh, uh, nice journey, but then it has other implications. Uh, the main one is that you welcome to your company another uh, stakeholder that is uh, Mr. Market that is going to give you every day a surprise uh, that is going to have uh, emotional uh, implications to you, to your team, to your shareholders, uh, and also is going to distortion some of the priorities of the company. And one of the big difficulties is uh, to manage that complexity uh, that is not only about customer expectations, team expectations, uh, but it's also about market expectations. And what I learned is that you need to be open and transparent with the team saying, now we have another uh, stakeholder being public is good. We have access to capital. We are realizing value for our investors, but we are also adding complexity to the process and just be transparent that has uh, implications because it's going to have implications, uh, of course, uh, to, to you, to your team, and, and to your investors. So something that I learned by taking the company public is that you need to change the way you talk about the future. When you are a founder, your main role is to sell a dream, and many times you need to overpromise. But when you are a public company, you need to commit to some financial targets, and you need to make sure that you deliver. So what I learned is that you need to underpromise and overdeliver, and you need to understand that they have different messages for your customers, for your teams, 
and you need to uh, adjust because otherwise you are going to be hijacked uh, by the market and you could compromise your corporate values and not do the best thing for the customer because you overpromise to the market. So I, in my case, uh, I got training and it's very important to, to know what, do you, what uh, do you need to say at each moment and to each stakeholder uh, because being a public company has a lot of implications and you need to change like in any phase of an entrepreneur the way you, you talk and you deal with uh, expectations. IPO in your company is one of the most exciting moments in your company's history but you really need to know what you are getting into. An IPO is not a destination it's just the beginning of a new phase of the company. And you really need to understand the implications of being public before getting into, into this, because it will change the, your company uh, uh, forever. So talk to other entrepreneurs that have done it uh, before and try to understand if it is the right thing for the company before taking the decision.